Hello friends, welcome to AI Flux. So Midjourney just released version six of Midjourney. And I have to say for a tool that you pay $30 a month for, this is probably the best image generation tool on earth right now. Better than stable diffusion for most people and significantly better than basically any other tool that does this. It doesn't do video yet, but it's absolutely wild. So what's new, how can I use it? And what are some prompts that absolutely blew my mind? That's what we're gonna cover in this video. Let's get into it. So above all, what has been significantly improved is accuracy in prompt tracking and support for extended prompts, uh, also improved coherence and model knowledge. So what do these things actually mean? Basically what this means is this is how your image aligns with the prompt and how closely certain attributes of the prompt actually affect the image in comparison to previous versions of Midjourney. So this has to do mostly with subject, with how the subject is actually presented within frame, and a number of other camera attributes that actually make these scenes much, much more complex. When you have a single subject and other subjects in the frame that are technically the same thing, like a person in a skate park or a skier on a mountain with other people, these attributes become really important. And what I think is cool with Midjourney is it seems to really understand what the human eye likes to see. And what it likes to see is much more complex than just bokeh around a singular subject. When you start to look at camera angle, how light diffuses and how the eye wants to perceive it, what's really interesting is sometimes mid-journey images will look more realistic than CGI images that are actually path traced, where they're literally tracing every single particle of light, every single photon that could have hit something, and mid-journey does a better job faster than these other systems. And that actually just blows my mind as someone who used to work on these systems professionally. The next huge improvement is what I call improved image prompting and remix. So remix has been a feature in Midjourney for quite some time, but what that actually does has changed from version to version. Using Vary now has much more power as the images maintain better coherence. For example, you can see how in these images that by changing the vehicle in the original prompt from a van, the images maintain much more consistency. So basically it means if you nail the theme or the general environment you're looking for, um, placing a subject in that and changing it now is much easier to do. And what's cool about Midjourney in comparison to other generative image tools is that you don't have to do this with impainting. Uh, impainting is kind of a cheat way to do this and it requires much more computation. But what's cool is Midjourney is much better at this point of frame to frame interpolation. And I think for me, this is a huge Easter egg in terms of pointing to the really important tenets of AI uh, text to video or frame to video. And I would not be surprised if in the near to distant future, especially sometime in 2024, we see a video product from Midjourney. Because from what I know, the best outputs from Pika or from Runway ML, in terms of image to video or text to video, most of the best videos coming out are actually images generated in Midjourney and then pasted into these other tools that then take the image and turn it into video because they can provide so much more context than you really could within a prompt. You know, Because a, a picture is worth a thousand words and in this case, uh, a picture is worth more than a 1000 context long input. Another a huge improvement is the limited capability for text drawing. So right now uh, you should enclose your text in quotations and use style raw or reduce stylized values to get better results for prompting text. Um, prompting text is something that has been technically a feature in Midjourney, but it's something Midjourney has struggled quite a bit with. And this is slowly getting better. It's not perfect. I have to say the latest version of Dolly actually performed much better with this. The other really interesting parallel with the latest version of Dolly and this latest V6 Midjourney update is the latest Midjourney is actually way less censored than prior versions. And I think this is actually kind of a marketing technique because when you turn that down a bit, people get way more creative. And I think you just get more uh, clicks on Twitter and just generally. So another really cool thing to see uh, Midjourney catching up with some of the other huge players with. Another thing that has gotten much better, and this has actually been a strong suit of Midjourney from day one, in my opinion, even when it was back in beta, and this is enhanced upscaling options and just better upscaling in general. What's cool now is you actually have both subtle and creative modes of upscaling. These both for now double the resolution. And for now you can find buttons for these modes labeled in U1, U2, U3, and U4 below your images after selection. And there are a few features I'll show you how to enable at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. Another one is the launch features. So what are the actual launch features of V6? So basically these are huge updates to the existing features of V5, specifically uh, AR or aspect ratio, chaos, weird, tile, stylized, style, raw, 
very sub subtle and strong, which have been completely redone. Remix, which has actually been rebuilt from scratch. Blend and Describe. Describe being one of the bigger features in V5. And I should say these are still only available in V5, but they have been updated. Coming soon in V6 explicitly is Pan, Zoom, Very Region, Tune, and a completely new version of Describe that will be fully updated. So we can't see these yet, but technically they will be released in the next few days. And what I should say is prompting has also significantly changed in this version, with greater emphasis on the prompt's influence. So uh, similar to how some of these models change. So what's interesting with these models is when the prompting uh, format changes and what the clip actually looks at changes, these are really hard changes for these developers to make because they know people have gotten used to using these, they have workflows, and these are technically breaking changes for some of these workflows. But what's important is when you update clip, you really upgrade the capability of these models in a pretty massive way. So for optimal use of V6, after playing around with it for a bit, I recommend uh, using something called additive prompting. Uh, and for a concise guide, I've actually linked to a really awesome post from Storia AI called um, basically prompting style for Midjourney V6. I think they have the best breakdown. And if I just read this before, I would have been able to use V6 to the absolute uh, most of its capability. So check that out below. It's linked here. Now, if you want to try this out right now, there are two ways to enable this right now. And I know this is what you guys want to see. You know, how do I use this in Discord? So basically, there are two settings. So you can type slash settings and select V6 from the dropdown, basically saying I only want to use the beta V6 model. Uh, again, technically this is still in beta. Or you can simply not click anything and just include tac tac V6 at the end of all your prompts. Both of those will enable the beta model. Uh, I usually use this, the settings because I, just, I, just, I want to use the latest stuff um, because it's where Midjourney is going anyway. At the end here, I'm going to include some of my favorite images. I really like how Midjourney at this point, if you upscale enough, I would argue is as capable as SDXL and SDXL Turbo. They've also fixed a lot of the performance drawbacks that previously made Midjourney less fun to use. My fondest memories of using Midjourney are the early days when you didn't really have to pay too much extra for fast generation and where you could just click again and again and again and it would give you awesome outputs. And I, I think there's really a sweet spot in terms of UI that makes these images, uh, that makes these generative AI image tools so much fun to use. There have been some incredible Pixar workflows that I'll link below. There have also been uh, some really awesome workflows that look at creating portraits or doing architectural work. I know a number of architects who exclusively use Midjourney, and the funny thing is they like it so much, they, they refuse to use other tools that I think are more tunable, that I think they'd actually like using. So Midjourney definitely has a huge advantage with artists and people who are a little less technical. And what's cool is, you know, the open source tools like Stable Diffusion XL and Comfy UI, they provide really interesting capabilities. But generally, they're the market of, um, or the funnel of finding new people who haven't used this stuff yet or are not quite technical enough to, you know, spin up a Linux box to use SDXL, this is where Midjourney will dominate. And I can't wait to see what they're going to show us in the new year. So uh, if I don't make a new video before uh, the holidays, I hope you guys all have a great holiday. Uh, Merry Christmas. And yeah, check out Midjourney. Tell us what you think. If you like our content, please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the new year.